All right, welcome back. Episode 171, I think, of Chaotic Lean Taller. Um, we got Mike again. We're going to uh, start out with a couple grids. Uh, then we're going to jump more into the NFL. First week of preseason here, you know, real preseason, I guess. Um, but make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Go check out. Uh, I've been doing some cool videos, recaps of, of old NFL games. Um, so go check those out. Um, and again, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let's go. All right. So, Mike, what's going on? Let's, I guess let's talk a little bit of, of baseball to start before we get into the grid. So uh, I guess just just give me a little bit. What, what was something you were watching this week in baseball? Watching the the AL East race, of course. The Yankees losing to the White Sox last night, 12-2. to oh. NL West has become a race. Three teams within three games. Who would have thought that? But, uh, but now Mookie Betts is back. Um, Muncy... Yamamoto going to be back, so might take some of the fun out of it. But, um, yeah, a few division races in the Central. And the uh, Guardians and Twins played four over the weekend. They split. Guardians just kind of hanging on at this point. But Ale's wide open. Houston's hot again. You know, watch out. So uh, things are kind of starting to heat up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Red Sox did call up their big three, Kyle Teal, Marcelo Meyer, and shit, who was the third guy. Um, they called him up to AAA, so it, it's like the Avengers. If, if they try and bring him up in September, they're going to bring him up like the Avengers or uh, like the, the Trinity and the, the DCEU. But yeah, they're, they're looking for reinforcements. Um, but the Yankees, the Yankees losing to the White Sox is the most embarrassing loss of the season, right? I mean, just well, the, the worst them. team in baseball. Maybe in history and twelve yeah. to two, and that's a game that coming off a of, you know, and they're in a they're coming off a win over the Rangers. They're in a stretch where they've played you know, like the the Blue Jays, the Angels, the Rangers, and now the White Sox. And I think they're five and five in those games. You know, it's an opportunity for them to feast on that easy schedule and pull uh, away from the Orioles a little bit in the AL East, and it just hasn't worked out that way. And to me, the Yankees have been an extremely ordinary team since that forty nine and twenty one start. They're well. You know, I think they're, what, eight games under 500 since that point. So they, you know, and they did this two years ago when they had that exceptional start. Last year, they just weren't very good. Um, you know, I, I don't think it's totally an aberration. I don't think this team is anything special. I don't understand why they're the favorite in the American League. You know, the, the sports books have them as the AL favorite, still slight favorite to win the AL East. And uh, and I just don't see it. This is This is the same thing with Dave Roberts. I feel like we've been hearing about Aaron Boone being fired for how long now like the last three to four years at least and the same thing with brian cash this has to be like and this has to be it for them like if they don't at least i think you have to make a, an alcs appearance if you're the yankees considering what you've spent they go out and get juan soto and again like is it hard to blame cashman in this scenario, because he's, it, it almost looks like he's kind of done the right things this season. You go out and get Soto, and then you go out and try and get a reinforcement in Jazz Chisholm. Now, you could say he's a 250, 260 hitter. That's the bat you were going to add to your lineup. Really? <laughs> really? Like, that's your big savior for the lineup? But again, can you blame Brian Cashman as much as you can blame Aaron Boone? They... They signed Stroman, who was doing well for a little while, and they but they passed on Jack Flaherty. They said that mm -hmm. the medicals concern them. He's delivered two pretty good starts for L.A. You know, that looks bad. They need another starter. Rodon, he leads the AL and wins, but he's not, you know, he's very inconsistent. Cole is, does not look like himself, although he did pitch well in his last outing. Um, Cortez has, you know, faded to the pack as a Stroman. They're missing Clark Schmidt. I mean, I yeah, it, it seems like, I mean, it ultimately does fall on a GM when the team or, you know, the full team is not carrying its weight. And that's part of it. An amazing season by Aaron Judge, great season by Soto, great pickup by Chisholm. And yet that feels like that's it. Like it's those three yeah. guys for the most part and not much else. Um, and Boone, yeah, I mean, I'm surprised after last year he got another shot. You know, the Yankees don't yeah. usually tolerate losing seasons or non-playoff seasons uh, too well. Um you know, I think Girardi got away with it his first year because it was his first year, and then they won the World Series in 09. But, um, 
you know, Aaron Boone, I, they haven't made a World Series. And this is his seventh year, I think, as a manager. Yeah, he took over in 18 when they got Stanton. I mean, there's another guy, oh. right? Giancarlo Stanton. I mean, where's he been? The injuries and when he's been on the field, he's, he hasn't produced it. So, I mean, I think you could blame Boone, Boone maybe as much as Cashman, but I think Cashman's got to go too. I think it's a package deal if they if they fall flat, you know, or go out in the wild card round or maybe even the division series, um, changes have to be made. I'm curious what the last Yankee manager to not at least make a World Series was. It's a good question. Because, yeah, I mean, was there. did Buck not? I thought Buck made it. Who yeah, was the one? Yeah. Who was the? Hold on. Tory go. took over in 96, uh, in 96, I believe. And that was the first year. And then they won four out of five. So if you look and at they it, didn't they didn't go in like ninety five. Uh, no, no, they went in ninety six. So oh Tory's, yeah, that was the Tory's Marlins career. year. Yeah, Tory, uh, his career got off to a great start with four and five years, or his Yankees yeah. career, I should say, because he was managing St. Louis. But yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm I'm trying to look up Sunday's game just for the Yankees because I know, yeah, Stanton ha did have a home run. Yeah, Stanton had a home run, Judge had a home run, and Soto had two. And that's the one you mentioned Stanton. I was like, he's done something, something good in the past few days. But yeah, Stanton has just not been nearly what I think the Yankees fans expected him to be. And you know, when you when Stanton steps up to the plate, he's arguably one of the more menacing batters. I think right, like when he's just standing there. And when he swings, it's so powerful. You would think, man, this guy will hit a home run half of his at bats. I mean, it's well, yeah, he's just I mean, so that, menacing, but he hasn't been anything. Well, he's got twenty this year, but you know, despite hitting twenty four last year, he hit one ninety one the year before. He hit two eleven. I mean, this guy when he won MVP, he not only hit fifty nine homers, he actually had a career high or close to a career high, I should say, in batting average two eighty one. You know, the, the Yankees got him off his absolute best year, and he put up pretty solid numbers his first year. But, you know, injuries in 2019, he barely saw the field, 18 games, and then obviously only played part of the shortened season, already a shortened yeah. season. So that's been a big, big, I mean, of course, the Yankees didn't really give up anything for him. It was like a contract dump by Jeter and the Marlins, Jeter giving him to his old buddies. But uh, it, it really hasn't, I don't think that the Yankees have gotten nearly the value on that contract. And uh, would you compare Jeter to Michael Jordan as an owner? Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Yeah pretty fair comparison at this point Tom they didn't he didn't win a world yeah, series with them right what's that, that wasn't he didn't win a world series as, as the marlins owner no he he lost a world series with the yankees against the marlins but he yes. did not win a world series with the marlins and you know maybe tom brady will head down that path if the, he's part owner of the raiders they don't win for the next you know another 10 20 <laughs> 30 years and we'll start talking about him yeah i have a strong feeling brady won't he probably won't try to get as involved with the Raiders because just just knowing, you know, if you fail, you're you're going to be talked about like that. But let's let's jump into our grid today. There we go. We're going to start baseball and then we'll jump to football. I think we can do this one a little quicker, although these teams are it's difficult. You know, these teams are a little more irrelevant, I think, in, in comparison to the other ones we could get. Uh, play the outfield. We'll start off with the easy ones. Play the outfield. McCutcheon. Easy. Sure. Number one. Yeah. Let's, let's or do we want or do we want to try and get cute with that and, and wait on it? You could put Orlando Merced. This guy from played Ken Griffey baseball in nineteen ninety three. He was like their right fielder. I just remember uh throw him in there. See if Boom. Orlando Merced. There you go. Point White Sox three. outfielder. How about let's pay homage to the last time the White Sox were relevant, won the World Series. Let's throw Scott Podsednik in there. Five leadoff man. Whoops. He was great. He was great. He had a big grand slam, correct? Am I right about uh, that? He did have a big home run in the World Series. I think it was a grand slam, yeah. And then outfield all-star, Jaron Durant. He's an outfielder. He's an all-star. I think that's going to be a, a lower number, too. Sure. Or we could go Jacoby Ellsbury. He was an all-star. I think he Jacoby. Was. Jacoby has been forgotten, I think, a lot. There well, you go, point three. His career kind of ended, you know. Yeah. 
injuries and that big contract. Brewers All Star. Uh, I'm trying to think of the, who's. Let me throw Devin Williams in there. Right, he was an All Star, wasn't he? Not this year, but I would not be able to tell you. No, you know, if if we're worried about it, always just go safe. Go with Prince Fielder. That's a good one. That's a that's a classic one. He was, uh, I can't remember if he was the MVP of the World Series. Uh, I mean, the World Series, the uh, All-Star game, but he he had a big three-run homer in an All-Star game in, I want to say 2011 or something. I think he, he hit the home run, the NL won, and the NL had home field, and the Brewers almost made the World Series, but he ended up giving that home field to the rival Cardinals who beat the Brewers in the NLCS, then beat the Rangers in seven games with the help of that home field advantage. Anyway, Padres all-star. Well, Tony Gwynn was my favorite player. I know it's the easiest answer, but anytime we can give a shout out to maybe the greatest pure hitter of our generation, got to do it. Eh, 14's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I don't know who would be, who would have more than him? Like Trevor Hoffman, maybe, or. Um, Hoffman, probably. You got to think more recent to think. Um, Fernando Machado. Fernando. Yeah. You think they would. I wonder how many people would choose Juan Soto. Yeah, more recent. Let's see, White Sox, Padres. James Shields. Yes. Is that right? Nice call. Big game, James. White Sox, Brewers. Easy, because I use this guy all the time in grid. Zach Duke, lefty reliever. <laughs> there you go. Can't go wrong with um, that. Which is a bunch of teams. Eritz, Padres. Well, Pirates, Brewers, you know, there we could use McCutcheon there because we didn't use him for the generic outfield. So, see, McCutcheon's probably going to be the most popular one. But I think he's... 31. He's, yeah, 31%. Pirates, Padres? Let's see. It's definitely like some sort of weird reliever, I feel like. Like a, a sub submarine pitcher or something. I'm just thinking about the Padres now because they made a bunch of moves... You know, so guys that, you know, their team that's constantly shuffling guys in and out. See, I, I don't know why I keep thinking was, Chase Headley, but he didn't play for the Pirates. Was Josh Bell ever, Josh ever Bell in San Diego? Josh Padre, wasn't he? I, th I think Josh Bell was a Padre, yeah. We just give it a go? Yeah. We don't have too much dead air here. Boom, Boom. let's go. Great call. Easy. No problem. All right. What was uh, his percentage? Oh, Brian Giles. You know, I actually think I was thinking of him, and I was thinking of Chase Headley. Maybe I don't know why I would mix those two guys up, but um, yeah, Grandal been a good one. Uh, yeah, uh, the All Star one. Look at the Judge percentage percent. I mean, there's just so many you can put there for right, right All Star Definitely. outfielder. Yeah. yeah, Brian Giles. Interesting. Yeah, is it going to show me? See, I'm just curious who else played for the Pirates and Padres. All right, let's see. We got Gene Tennant. Oh, Goose Gossage. So I wouldn't have known those. I wouldn't have thought of them. Reggie Sanders. Oh, here we go. Jason Bay. Jason Bay. I was thinking Jay Bell for some reason, too. I couldn't remember if Jay Bell ever played for the Padres. I, th I know he played for the Diamondbacks and the Pirates. I just don't know if he ever played for the Padres. No, it doesn't look like he did. Adam Frazier, one of them. Former White Sox. I think Red Sox too, right? Do you ever play for the Red no, Sox? No, I don't think so. Let's see, Wade LeBlanc as well. Yeah, Wade LeBlanc, yeah. Mike Maddox. Joe Musgrove too. I feel like oh, I should have known that one. Yeah, that one we should have gotten. He just pitched last night. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, of course, Joe Musgrove. Yeah, that one was okay. I knew there was going to be one obvious one where we're like, of course. Yeah. And David Musgrove. Ross? Yeah, David Ross. Same David Ross, though? Question mark. Yeah. The the uh, Cubs David Ross. Okay. Red Sox and Cubs David Ross. I not have thought In about that. 2005, he uh, played on both teams and then did not play for, <laughs> play for them ever again. All right. Let's go to football, and then we'll, uh, we'll talk preseason. It's the best time of the year, preseason. We get to overreact to everything that happens. All right. 5,000 yards rushing in their career. Reggie, does Reggie Bush have 5,000? Uh, I don't know, but he was, he could also be an answer to Dolphins Bills, I think. Didn't he play for both teams? Ooh, yes, he did. Well, but, uh, but we could also go Thurman Thomas for that. Or we could switch oh. those two over. 
could go Thurman Thomas, 5,000 career rushing yards, go Reggie Bush Dolphins. But I, I don't know though, how confident I am that he played for the, both those teams. Uh, but Reggie I, Bush? I know Thurman Thomas played for the Dolphins and the Bills. That's 100%. So I would just go with Thurman right Yeah, now. let's go there. Uh, with the Dolphins, like I think at the end of his career in like 2000. So uh, yeah. yeah, Thurman, uh, Bengals, Dolphins. Uh, Ooh, it's a, it's a lineman. I'm thinking of a lineman right now. Fuck. Well, I think a 5 I don't know why. Yard... What's that? I don't know why, but Richie Incognito came to mind for he, for this, which I know does not. I don't think he played for the Bengals. Five thousand yard Dolphin. I was thinking either Larry Zonka or Ryan Gore played for the Dolphins. I don't know if that counts because he didn't get five thousand with the Dolphins, obviously, but he definitely has in their career. Must have played at least okay, one yeah. game. Yeah. So then Frank Gore is the can't go wrong there. Could have gone with. Thurman also, I suppose, but Frank Gore. And S- Saquon at 5,000? I mean, I would go Tiki Barber. I think Saquon does, but we'll go, because he's been in the league long enough. Well, Tiki's been in the league, uh, he was in the league a decade, so. Yeah. yeah. Panthers? Uh, you know, Stephen Davis had to have 5,000 yards in his career. No question. Is it Steve... With a V PH. or PH? PH? There you go. Yeah. Um, Giants, Bills. Probably, Fuck. you know, I think Matt Barkley might have been a backup for both of those teams. Oh, that sounds right. That definitely sounds right. I was thinking backup quarterback. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure Barkley was on the Giants at some point. Oh, No, he wasn't. Oh, I fucked that up. Excuse my language. Bills. Oh, think of another one. Bills, later. Panthers, Frank Reich. Did he play for the Panthers? He was the first quarterback to ever play for the Panthers. Hmm. Did Andy Dalton play for any of those other three teams? Andy Dalton? I don't believe so. Definitely not a Dolphin. And not a Giant. So Andy Dalton, I think, is the, the answer with this one. He did play for Carolina, right? Yeah. Yeah, he did. He's. I think he's there now. But I don't know if they'll count that. I guess they do. Okay. Uh, Bengals, Giants. Giants. Thinking quarterbacks. McCar- McCarron never went to the Giants, right? No. He was with the Bills, maybe. Mm. We may have to come back to this at the end. It's going to hurt our brains. Yeah. yeah, we'll come back to it. But let's talk a little preseason. Week one, we're we're going to overreact. I'm going to overreact. My notes are, I'm, I'm intending to overreact to every preseason game. First off, Hassan Reddick says he wants out of New York now. Um, but the Jets said, no, you are not getting out. So, of course, you know, the Jets season starts with another, another media circus. When is it ever going to end? Um... I think Rogers did. What did Rogers say on it? Rogers said something on it. I can't remember what it was. Oh yeah, he wants Reddick a jet fun ride ahead. Is what Rogers says. Not a shock. And then JJ McCarthy undergoes knee surgery as well. Not a shock that it happened to the Vikings. You know they are just the unlucky of the unluckiest. That is just the common Vikings thing to do. Yeah, I mean, life after Kirk Cousins starts, and now you got to worry about your. Your new toy. They should they should trade for Kirk Cousins. They need a quarterback. <laughs> Falcons will eventually uh, go with uh, Penix, so Cousins will be out there. Wouldn't be shocked. I mean, that always happens, right? Guys go back, end up on a team. Yeah. yeah why not? Uh, Martavis Bryant, as well, was signed to the Commanders. Six-year gap between his last NFL game played. I love Martavis Bryant. I remember when he was... In Pittsburgh, and I loved him as a receiver, too. Like, I really wanted him to succeed, even though I wasn't. I obviously hated the Steelers, but I just wanted him to succeed so bad. So I'm really excited to see him back. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Long, long time out of the game. Yeah. Bajorn Werner is uh, back with the Colts as an international ambassador. So he's going to be going around to different countries and, you know, just promoting the Colts, which... I saw some Colts fans dunking on Bajorn Werner. We've done enough dunking on Bajorn Werner. He was a first-round pick. It didn't work out. It happens literally all the time. 
just let the guy exist as as our ambassador. I'm I'm glad to have him. He seems like a pretty cool guy. Speaks speaks a few languages. So you know, I'm happy for him. Go go, Bajorn. Re- represent the Colts well, right? Yeah. Um, the Forners reportedly have a deal in place for Brandon Ayuk with Pittsburgh, uh, but they are keen on keeping him. They do not. They do have a long term deal on the table for him. He has not accepted it yet. That would be something. That'd be a big get for. For the Steelers. Tavon Austin also retired today, officially. I didn't even know he yeah. was... Time, if he had played, it would have been a pretty long gap since I've heard that name. I didn't even know he was still unretired. I did not know he was an active free agent. And then I just wrote down a bunch of rookies' anticipated returns that we were seeing this week. Drake May goes two for three for 19 yards on Thursday Night Football against the Panthers. Um, and then Joe Milton, my favorite, the guy that can throw an orange 110 yards... Four for six, 54 yards, and a touchdown. I think, listen, Joe Milton is going to be the starter. He's he's going to take the Patriots to the Super Bowl this year. We already know what's happening. We'll see. He's he's the quarterback that we were looking for. Uh, Michael Penix had a good day. Nine for 16 for 104. Definitely trying to prove the haters wrong there. Uh, Hank Dell finally came back. Uh, he also got shot this offseason. Did not know that. That's crazy. One reception, 34 yards, and a touchdown. Jay, here we go. Here's some of the big quarterbacks. Jaden Daniels here, two for three, 45 yards in a drive, and a rushing touchdown. So, you know, the, the commanders are back. I mean, the, everyone everyone's back. Everyone's just back. Um, if you did well, your team's back. Caleb Williams as well. That was, I think, the premier matchup this week. Two field goal drives, four for seven for 95 and 13 yards. He seemed confident in the pocket he seemed comfortable he seemed confident he seemed like he was ready and i think that is the even if he makes mistakes i think the best case scenario for bear for bears fans this year is that he just stays confident in himself yeah it's i mean the expectation shouldn't be that high for the bears as a team that's the good news i mean they're they're high for williams but um the bears have never had a good quarterback like never in their history basically you know so (laughs) Bar is low. That's the good news for Caleb Williams. Yeah. Do, I mean, obviously Bears fans care about, you know, what, what's going to happen this season. But I would think the most important thing is, and this is saying as a Colts fan with Richardson, is you just pray that he looks competent, that he looks like a competent quarterback, that you're able to win games, you know, because the Bears were not bad. They were not horrible last year. You know, they were, I mean, they were still in the top 10, but they, they definitely showed some signs of life at least. And, and I think that's a big confidence boost for Caleb Williams. As long as he's just competent, as long as he doesn't turn the ball over too much, that's all you really want to see out of him this year. That's all Bears fans can really ask for, I think. I mean, they had a nice run at the end of last year, right? They, maybe the Bears fans will just be happy if he beats Green Bay. He could go like 4-13, and 13, but if he beats Green Bay, then... He'll probably still be considered, you know, it'll be considered improvement from last year, even though they won, I think, seven games. Yeah. You got to sweep Green Bay. I think you have to sweep Green Bay to really, really show them. Even if those are your only two wins, that's a winning season for the Bears if you sweep Green Bay. Um, I think one win would suffice. I think that the uh, <laughs> uh, what the winning streak is pretty long for uh, for the Packers right now. It's uh, I'm looking at it. Oh, my God. It's like. 10 or 10 games, it looks like. Let's see. 10 straight, 15 out of the last 16. Bears, Jesus. their only wins that over the Packers are, they had one in 2018, 2015, 2013, 2010. <laughs> and that was 2010 in the regular season, not the NFC Championship game when they played. So it has been complete and utter domination. So Caleb, just win one of those matchups, and I think people will be happy. Yeah, the last one, yeah, 2018, Bears 24, Packers 17. Win game in Chicago. To, yeah, that was the double doink year, if I'm right about that. 2018? Yeah. Cor- 2018, correct, yeah. Last time that the Packers actually, or the Bears actually swept the Packers uh, was 2007. So that was post-Super Bowl year for the Bears. Next, I guess the next player, Jim McCarthy, who we just mentioned, or who we mentioned is having 
you know, knee surgery, torn meniscus. He went 11 for 17, 188, a touchdown, a pick, and two rushes for 18 yards. So that was, I mean, that, that's a pretty damn good debut for a guy who has been kind of touted as probably the worst quarterback pick, I think, of the draft. Like he was, everyone was saying this guy doesn't deserve it whatsoever. They were talking like he was Jamarcus Russell. I mean, like he was going to play that bad. And he was, you know, I mean, he was competent. It was beyond competent, I think. 188 in an NFL game, doesn't matter when it is, pretty damn good. I mean, nobody wants to get compared to Jamarcus Russell. That's pretty harsh. Yeah. Burrow threw a touchdown in his return um, and his only drive against the Bucks. Not a big deal. Spencer Radler goes 9 for 17, 70 yards, and a game winner against, um, I do not know who they played. I do not remember who the Saints played. Looks like they played the Cardinals, I think. Yeah, Cards. So, wait, is Radler? Where is Radler? He is in New Orleans, right? Yeah, cool name. Yeah, Spencer Radler. Maybe maybe he can play up to his name. That'd be pretty cool. Should be um, playing for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Snakes, rattle. That'd be perfect. That would be perfect. Bo Nix, 5 for 21, 125, and a touchdown against the Colts. Sean Payton actually left the starter. 5 for 21? 15 for 21, sorry. 15 for 21. That was not a good day. I mean, efficient, (laughs) but yeah, 15 for 21. All right, now we're talking. 15 for 21, 125, and a touchdown. They kept the starters in a lot longer to uh, give Bo Nix a chance to work with the number one guys. That shows me they're... They're assuming he's going to play this year. Like, he's going to be in some games this year and probably early that, you know, I would assume, because they wouldn't do that for pretty much anyone else, like Stetson Bennett, who we can talk about a little later. Yeah, yeah. Um, by the way, on Bo Nix, uh, Derek Wolf tweeted, huge relief to see that Bo Nix doesn't suck. <laughs> he does not suck. Uh, Richardson, Anthony Richardson. Uh, goes two for four for 25 yards in two series. I actually watched this one. They were, you know, clearly holding back. They, they didn't really dial up to anything too complicated, anything too crazy. Just said, hey, just go out and, you know, dump a few off, try try and throw some in some tight spaces. But it really just seemed very laid back. But offense looked dead. I'll overreact. Offense looked super dead. Uh, but again, it, it it was Denver. It was It was a preseason game. Uh, Stetson Bennett, he played the full game, played the entire game against the Cowboys. Goes 24 for 38, 224, a touchdown, and get this, four interception. Holy shit. A lot in the preseason game. They threw the winning touchdown, though. How many times, yeah, game that one touchdown was the game winner. So, But how many times can you try and fit a ball where it shouldn't be fit? Just, that's insane. Yeah. That's crazy to me. Yeah. If you're Brett Favre, maybe, but he's not <laughs> Brett Favre. He's yeah. Um, and then we old, did... Though. Funny. We did see uh, Trey Lance as well. Um, 25-41, 188, and 44 yards rushing. You know, I hope the kid gets a shot. He, he played, you know, pretty well, I would say. Uh, protected the ball well, if I'm correct. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of a... Mixed reaction on Trey Lance's debut. I mean, nobody from the Niners is upset that he's gone. I'll say that. Yeah, I think I think they're pretty confident in the guy they got right now. Uh, give me an overreaction to the Ravens. Yeah, Ravens Eagles lost sixteen thirteen. The Ravens preseason kind of, you know, crown is is seems to be done. Seems to be over. Yeah, they're like the preseason kings. Maybe that's the overreaction, but they've got a lot of, they've got some issues on the on the offensive line, uh, especially at guard. I mean, they're, I don't know what they're gonna do. Uh, you know, they, they got to do some shuffling. Um, you know, they got a guy right now. I can pronounce his name Faalele. I don't know. Did I say his name right? And he's he's a three a six foot eight, three hundred eighty pound guy, and they're trying to play him at guard. They're a little bit desperate right now on the offensive line. Jesus, I would say that's the. That, I mean, that's not maybe specific to one game, but um, they've just they're just in a weird spot. I mean, their first game is against the Chiefs, who have a great defensive line. That just scares me. It was a big. It was a big weakness uh, that that came to the forefront in the AFC Championship game was the offensive line. I'm not sure that they did enough 
the draft in the off season to really feel like, okay, yeah, now they've, now they've got a championship caliber offensive line that, that could hold them back again. Yeah. Um, you're going to have a good test, I guess, immediately. You would uh, honestly, you would rather deal with the chiefs week one, right? Yeah, I mean, they get their, their bearing straight. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And so you can get your bearing straight because it does seem like the chiefs do knock, knock, you know, the bearings off a little bit for, for other teams when you play them. But Joe was, was Joe Burrow performing, you know, actually competent, you know, he wasn't hurt. He was okay. I mean, was there any, any thought about that? No, I think just the fact that he made it through the game healthy is, uh, that's he, he's, uh, I don't know about his hair, but other than that. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a big fan of the hair. The, uh, I know that was his high school, high school cut. He's going back to high school. It's probably some sort of motivational tactic for him, but, uh, you know, the Eminem cut, it, it died out probably when he had it that was probably he was probably the last person to have it and still be kind of cool with it that's fair yeah um all right let's let's go back let's finish up our grid and then we'll get out of here yeah i can't oh my god i still haven't thought of anybody who, who was it again who was the um oh, wait wait a minute wait did ocho cinco ever play for the dolphins did he i know he played for the Pats. he's all He's in Miami, lives in Miami. I don't know if he actually, or he got arrested in Miami or something. <laughs> something happened to him in Miami. Um, you know, he's on that list. Or he potentially, of, of guys he could potentially pick. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. Did uh, did Perfect ever go to the Dolphins? I don't know. If he went to the Raiders, maybe. But... Well, that would make sense. Yeah. But... What about Van Ness? What about him? Did he ever go to Cincy? Doesn't sound familiar. Yeah, I, I'm drawing a blank. We may have to do the dreaded give up here. Well, let's let's go to the Bills and Giants, the New York connection. There has to be some. I mean, it's they're in different conferences. They're in the same, well, not really in the same state, but they're named, you know, after the same state. There has to be something there. Yeah, thinking quarterback. Bills have cycled through a lot of quarterbacks over the years. Tyrod Taylor. I mean, I get go. that one. I can't believe I said Matt Barkley. Of course, Tyrod Taylor's on there. Yeah, an obvious one. Boy, I told you something would come to us. <laughs> we should have gotten that in the first place. Well, we get one more. We only get one more anyway. And Bengals. I think that's the one you got to go with. Well, actually, that one seems pretty difficult too. There was just so many forgettable. Bengals players, especially like in the last, like before Burrow, there were so many forgettable Bengals players. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering if Brandon Allen is a backup quarterback for, was a backup quarterback for since he, if he ever played for Miami, but I wouldn't swear. I don't think he did. Don't think he did. I mean, kickers would be, that would be one. I mean, like, I think I got one for the Bengals. And I, or you might as well guess. We only have one guess. We're not getting an immaculate grid. I think Shane Graham, May have played for both. Either he either played for the Bengals and I know he played one hundred percent for the Bengals, but I'm trying to remember if he. You no, know, it's as Shane. Uh, I think maybe has a Y in it, um, and I think he played. God, I, I know he played for at least one of the other teams. I just don't know which one. So let's got it. All right, there we go. All right, not bad. So I got I got a Bengal giant. We just who were the Bengals and Dolphins that we missed? Let's see, Bengals and Dolphins. Here, here's a really easy one. That's probably the top one. Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah, yeah, of course. I was thinking quarterbacks, Bengals, and he didn't come to mind because he's been Ray, so many teams. Ray Malaluga, another one. Uh, one. Samaje P. Ryan. I would have gotten that one. Let's see who else. Jesus, Mark Logan. I feel like I could have gotten that one just because he's in Tech Mobile. And he's pretty good. Mitchell, right. I'm looking here. Gus Ferrat. Yeah, that one. I so I was Eli like, Apple. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. All right, Eli Apple was another one we could have come up with. Donald Lee, I remember. I don't remember that he played for both teams. I just remember him as a player. I'm looking here. I remember Larry when Johnson. Eli Apple was like public enemy number one. Well, for Larry Johnson. The NFL. I didn't realize that the running back Larry Johnson, after he left the Chiefs, played for both of those teams. Never would have thought that. Yeah, he only had one year. I mean, Miami now. Richmond Webb, that was uh, Dan Wilkinson, yeah. Yeah, he did not. Larry Johnson did not do anything there, though. No. 
No, 204 Richardson with the Bengals. Was a punter for the Ravens' first Super Bowl team. Forgot that he played for both of those teams. Used to work out at the same gym as me. That's cool. <laughs> All right. Well, let's wrap it up there. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to like, comment. Subscribe, share, whatever, all that other shit. Check out our, our NFL recap videos, and we will see you next week.